The Holy Grail of brewing has always been a sweet bottle carbonated beverage. And I might have a way to fix that. Okay, so we have done it in the past where we would bottle carbonate something and then pasteurize, but we never knew, was it actually carbonated yet? Was it too soon? Was it too late? And if you do that in a glass bottle and you're not ready, it could blow up. But then if you use a plastic bottle, you can't pasteurize. So it's kind of this catch 22 in all different directions. Of course, you can use non-fermentable sugar and hope that it works because we're finding out that some of the sugar alcohols actually prevent yeast fermentation. So Great. that stops that. Research is a thing and we are constantly reevaluating our practices and making sure that we are putting the best information out to you. We recently found out that the non-fermentable sugars may actually be a bad thing. They Might. may actually be affecting carbonation, particularly if we want to carbonate that beverage and we use the non-fermentable sugars as a sweetener agent. See where I'm going with this? Okay, so another thing we've tried is doing the plastic bottle squeeze test. That's as... worthless. Because even if it's firm to squeeze, it doesn't mean that it's actually carbonated enough. You don't yeah. really know. Yeah. Now, of course, you can always just force carb. Sure. You can pasteurize, you know, sweeten, pasteurize, and then put it in a keg and force carb. You yeah. can always do that. And that is an option if you have the means to do so. But we don't want to. We want a natural carb. Exactly. So I put some thought into this and I came up with a very simple elegant solution yeah and that's this this is a cap that actually works with keg caps it's the same what, what do they call that it's the keg the regulator yeah the post for a, a, a keg and this fits on top of it and i have a regulator and pressure gauge on the end of this this that's... pressure gauge goes to 60 psi and this is the important part right here because this is going to tell us what the pressure is actually in there we don't have to squeeze we don't have to guess because we know because the pressure tells us right there on the gauge now something very 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 important this is a setup to use co2 cartridges so i actually have a release valve right here so this will not overpressurize. okay i can release pressure and it's all good that's the key. I bought this on Amazon as a unit, the way this is, I believe. I may have added the regulator to it. I'll have to check, but we'll put links to all this stuff. It's, Absolutely. It was pretty inexpensive. But what this does is it allows us to see when it's carbonated. So what I did is I added uh, a pinch of yeast and I took the 42 grams of sugar divided by how many bottles would fit into a gallon and put the appropriate amount of sugar in here and mixed it all up and put this unit on it. It's been like a day and it's, oh, oh, it's not touching the thing. Look at that. Okay. It's starting to show a little bit of pressure. Now, research that I've done shows that between 15 and 20 PSI on that gauge should say this is carbonated, okay? So that's what we're looking for. And at that point, I wanna, pour out a glass and see if it's actually carbonated, see if that's worthwhile. Because the idea is, if that worked, and if it's actually carbonated, well, that means you can pasteurize all the other bottles that you filled at the same time as this, using the same system as this, and boom, you now have a safe pasteurization and carbonated beverage that's still sweet without well, making a bottle bomb. We'll be back to you once we reach that and do a test to taste to see if we are correct. Absolutely. Okay, three weeks has gone by. I know in the last section I said 15 to 20 PSI on this should be carbonated. Well, I decided to let it go and see where it stopped going up. It stopped at about 28 PSI. So that's how much pressure is inside this bottle. Now, I want to point something out. I can still squeeze that bottle. Can you still? Good. It feels yeah. firm, yeah. but you can still squeeze it, yeah. which tells me that's probably not the best way to test if something's carbonated. And that's the whole point. By the way, I said in the earlier part of this video that it was multiple pieces. This unit here is one piece and the cap is another. In total, it's about 30 bucks on Amazon, give or take. We'll put links to both items. You can buy these in bulk. You can, you know, there's all different ways to do it, but that's the gist. You want a 60 PSI regulator though, just in case it goes super high. You also want something that you can release the pressure when needed, like when you wanna drink this. So like now. Yep, so right now we're gonna test to see if this is actually carbonated. Hopefully it's not just gonna spray everywhere when I start to open this up. Boom, just like that, let off the pressure. Yeah. That was easy. Okay, now I'm gonna open it up. Oh, another little pop. Ooh, I think we have carbonation. I don't- Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> We 
We do. We do. We do. It carbonated. <laughs> gonna let it release some of the pressure ah it smells good what did you carbonate that's um is it cider no it's one of the skyrim meats all right let's try that again shall we i did not chill this so this is just straight off the shelf warm that was very successful yeah i'm pleased by the way ball valve that's what this is called Ta -da! couldn't remember the name last time but look at this That is some serious carbonation. It's lovely. I'm so pleased. Yeah, that's one of the one of the Skyrim means. Oh, is this the one with lavender in it? I'm sorry. I think it's the one with lavender in it. I don't know. I grabbed something off the shelf just so that I could carbonate. I wanted something that was dry so that I wasn't adding sweetness in. Let me explain how this works for you and how this proves that you can make a sweet carbonated beverage using fermentable sugars. Okay, here's what you do. When you're bottling your beer, wine, cider, mead, whatever it is, doesn't even matter what ABV it is, you're gonna bottle just as you normally would. You're gonna take one plastic bottle, okay? And you're gonna take- It's important that the plastic bottle is set for carbonation. It yeah, is... I'm using actual beer bottles that are made for carbonation. <clears throat> you put this cap, on that, once, you, once you've filled it with your liquid that already has enough yeast and sugar in it for, carbon, for proper carbonation. Now keep in mind, that's just your base. You have added honey or other sweetener to make it sweet too, but you want enough in there that you can make it sweet to the level you want and add your carbonating sugar, okay? That's really, really important. Then you put on your ball cap top. Then you put this on. And you just squeeze, put it on. Then you let this carbonate all the way until it goes to about 25 to 28 PSI. If you want that level of carbonation. If you want less carbonation, you can go a little bit lower. 20 is probably the minimum I would go, I would say. I wouldn't go past 30 because you might be risking some problems. But once you get to that point- That what? chart that we found with the different, was it PSI that they showed the different I levels? don't think they showed PSI. I think oh. they used atmospheres. Uh, and I, I have yet to figure out the whole atmospheres to PSI thing. Somebody can probably tell me. But anyway, at that point, you take this one off. You, you remove the pressure and drink this one, okay? Put it in the fridge overnight and drink it. You're not going to pasteurize this one. But all the others, because you put them in glass bottles, I might have forgot to say that earlier, they're in glass bottles. You can pasteurize those. Just be careful. Make sure they were at room temperature the whole time. Bring them up to temperature slowly, 140 degrees Fahrenheit, I'll put the Celsius right here, for 22 minutes, and you should be just fine. The main trick to pasteurization is do not let the bottle bottom touch the bottom of the pot while it's heating up. I like to use an immersion circulator or a sous vide because that way it's heating the water rather than the pot. Okay, on a typical stove, you're heating the pot. That is gonna be a lot hotter than the water and direct contact with the glass could cause it to break. If you have no immersion of circulator and you need to do it on the stove top, if you use canning setup, normally there's a basket or something yeah. that elevates the cans. Even a be, towel in the bottom is-, is And that, that, that should work. Keeps them from rattling. <clears throat> there's always an inherent little bit of risk when you're pasteurizing a bottle, especially something under pressure. Yep. So that's why I don't recommend going past say 30 PSI, because that would be a lot of pressure for this. But that is the easiest way I have seen to solve the problem. Just remember, you only need one of these setups. This is for your every test batch. subject. Yeah, you have this and all your others are just regularly bottled, just like you normally would. This is your tester. It's also your sacrificial lamb because you get to drink this one like the next day after pasteurization. Well, you could drink them all the day after pasteurization, so it doesn't really matter. That's when you drink right away. But the, yeah, this one, you well, you could put it in the pre, fridge. Pre-pasteurization. Yeah, put it in the fridge and drink it. Because you don't pasteurize plastic. Yeah, you don't pasteurize the plastic one. If you tried to do this in glass, you probably could. I just think it's a little bit more risky. If this one was glass too, you could just pop a cap on this one and pasteurize it along with it. You could do it, totally do that too. I hadn't actually considered that thought. Do they have screw top glass that this contraption will That I don't know. You want a screw top though, because that's what this is made for. It's made for <clears throat> screw top bottles. But anyway. If this was a totally successful 
test. And this was just one of those, like, I went, oh, wait, what if I did that? Because then we're seeing inside the bottle. And that was the whole key to this is knowing what's happening in there so we know when it's ready. If anyone actually doesn't understand the process that we did here, please let me know before you try this. Because the last thing you want to do is let the other bottles keep going. Remember, I didn't add this to be sweetened. This is just a control to be carbonated. Yeah. So now I have my information, 20 to 30 PSI. If I added more sweetener to this, it would have kept going and building up more pressure. <sighs> right, that's the idea. When this gets to 20 to 30 PSI, you so pasteurize, pasteurize all the bottles. Pasteurization okay? at the appropriate time and the appropriate temperature kills your yeast so they stop fermenting. But you still have your carbonation there and you still have sweetness level. The point. That's the idea. So if anybody's confused on that, please ask before you go and do this. I don't want anybody making a bottle bomb and I don't want anybody to be terrified of making a bottle bomb with this system either. Yeah. This actually takes the fear out of oh, it. Oh yeah, this makes That's it easy. That's the idea. Easy peasy. So as always guys, thanks so much for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.